Hello, I'm Chris Busby. I'm the Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risk and I'm here in Stockholm in the Baltic Sea Regional Office of the ECRR. I'm here to talk to you about the Nuclear Repository for Waste um, which is being proposed uh, to be built in Sweden um, at a place called Forsmark and the proposal is to put the radioactive waste in copper canisters underneath the sea. Here we are, it's a picture of, this is a picture of what they propose to do. So we have here um, an environmental, environmental impact statement. This is the environmental impact statement that I'm going to briefly talk to you about because it has many, many serious problems associated with it. The impact statement itself is childish. Um, it has pictures of birds, it has pictures of ducks and flowers. and um, It's sold as something which it isn't because the environmental impact which it will have is the impact of radiation on biota, on animals, on the very birds and flowers that are pictured in, 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 in this document and of course on people too. Um, the basis of its risk model is the International Commission on Radiological Protection. Although uh, uh, this is an organization that was largely based in Sweden and that is the basis for all radiation laws at the moment. But the problem with the ICRP risk model is it's wrong. It's incorrect for exposure to certain types of radioactivity, particularly internal radioactivity that's inhaled or ingested. Uh, and um, it's particularly wrong for the element uranium which now we know to be very, very much more dangerous than was ever thought, for various technical reasons. The European Committee on Radiation Risk published its own risk model in 2003, and this is still being developed. But one of the things that it um, was able to show, uh, this independent body of 20 or more internationally renowned radiation scientists from all over the world, was that these internal radionuclides have much higher capacity for harm, for causing cancer, for instance, or birth defects or genetic damage, than, uh, are, than is modelled by the ICRP. Uh, and what, uh, it, the, uh, the only place in, in this environmental impact assessment where they actually really deal with risk, they say that they use the risk model of the ICRP, and they say that after 100,000 years, all of this radioactivity uh, in the, this repository will have decayed away just to natural uranium. But of course it's not natural uranium, it's uranium that's been brought from all over the world to be used in nuclear power stations. So you're taking the content of all these uranium mines, concentrating it and putting it all in one place under the Baltic Sea. This is a sea that's already extremely radioactive because of Chernobyl and because of these self-same nuclear power stations and of course atmospheric testing fallout. And one statement that they make on page 37, they say that after 100,000 years, all of the radioactivity will have decayed away and it will have turned back into natural uranium. There, there they say that, natural uranium. And as I say, it's not natural uranium, but even if it were natural uranium, we would be talking about a, an, an awful lot of it, an awful lot of uranium. Now on the next page, we have a graph showing the decay of radioactivity according to this this, this environmental impact statement, a very misleading graph talking about the decay of radioactivity from the original 100%, and we're not told how much that is in terms of absolute value, down to 0.005%. Here's the graph. You can see. So 0.005% in terms of radioactivity, but in terms of uranium and the long, uh, long half-life life, uh, substances like uranium, plutonium and the other uranium isotopes U234, U235, the, uh, the radi more radioactive uranium, this graph would show 100% as long as it lasted because the half-life of uranium-238 is billions of years. So 100,000 years is meaningless. So this would be a graph which would be a straight line a straight line. There would be 100% at the beginning and 100% at the end. And all of this uranium is underneath the Baltic. And there's no way that by putting it inside copper canisters over that sort of period of time that you're going to keep it from the Baltic. So it's going to get into the sea, it's going to poison the sea, and all life forms in the sea will die. 
with that amount of uranium. And it will poison the people who near, live near the sea through a process called sea-to-land transfer. All of this has been modelled by the European Committee on Radiation Risk. So what you've done here is you've brought the contents of all the uranium mines in the world to one place, and you've tipped it into the Baltic, effectively. And this must not be permitted to go ahead.